Hello everybody, welcome back to the Mover Mailbag. Today we're going to take a look at some of the stuff you guys have sent and a few emails. It's mostly packages today, so to speak. Uh, a lot of stuff for the old mailbox, but I uh, hope you guys are having a great week uh, and have enjoyed Stormy's interview. The uh, part five will be airing on Monday, uh, which awesome, just an awesome guy. Uh, and then after that, uh, Major General Steve Reno Courtright, uh, he was actually the... Uh, Adjutant General of the Oklahoma Air National Guard, flew combat missions in Vietnam, uh, flew F-100s, really great guy. Uh, can't wait to share that interview with you uh, after Stormy's interview in the following week. So uh, for those of you wondering about the helicopter training and why it's been kind of sparse, the plan was always just to do one video a week. However, uh, I don't know if you saw in the last video or the last couple videos, we've been hovering at a really high power setting. Uh, and the helicopter went down for maintenance and it has a bad cylinder. So may go back to flying next week, may not, I don't know, because uh, the week after I've actually got to take some orders uh, to go to Eglin flying the T-38. So I don't know. We'll see. But uh, that's the update. Next week I have a lot of big stuff related to the previous announcement uh, with the uh, Fights On logo reveal. So uh, that will be uh, pretty big. You guys will be able to see uh, kind of what's been going on and what the plan is going forward. So uh, look for that on this channel, and I'll have some more links. Facebook page. If you're not following me on Facebook, facebook.com slash CW Lemoyne, uh, Twitter, CW Lemoyne, or Instagram, CW Lemoyne. So let's get into uh, the mail. This is interesting, and it comes from uh, Thomas. The dogs have arrived because they're wondering if the mail is for them. Oh, look, there we go. <laughs> you can see it here. <laughs> Hello, boys. Yo, does it smell like something for you guys? And the letter says, Mover. I've been a fan for about a year after discovering your YouTube channel. I applaud you for your service to your country as well as to your community and your love for your rescue dogs. One of them being right here, who thinks this is for him. It might be. It is great to see in you the positive things you've done in your career. I've read all the Spectre series books, enjoy your interviews with other pilots and personalities. It's also interesting to see the challenges you face in your helicopter training. Many would think it would be easy given your flying experience and skills. It's refreshing to see you take on this challenge and do so well. It's obvious that you look for perfection in all you do. I've enclosed an item you may like. I have made a few for our local sheriff, EMS people, as well as friends and family. Hope you like it. Best regards, Tom. P.S. If you're ever up in the New York area, want to do some shooting, I have a great range we can go to. Say hi to Sniper, Kaiser, and Luna. Oh, wow. You guys are really too nice. Whoa. Jeez. That is awesome. Look at that. That is awesome. Incredible. I gotta find a place to put this. Huh. I have to make room on the wall behind me because this is amazing. So if you want to check this out, um, Tom's Custom Flags. Um, and his card says, I'll put that link in the description if you guys want to get one of these because this is awesome. It says, uh, Tom's flags at optimum.net. He's up in New York. This is just wow. Thanks so much, Tom. This is beautiful. Just amazing. Great quality. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. America. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, that's 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 awesome. You guys, I mean, awesome. Just awesome. Okay. On to the next one. This is from Lee. Oh, cool. Uh, Wichita Police. Wichita Police SWAT. Nice. Awesome. He says, I came across your YouTube channel by accident and really got into your videos. I particularly like the fact your channel is not for entertainment purposes only, but there is a deep educational emphasis which I found enjoyable. 
If you're not training physically to be better, you might as well be trying to educate yourself about a topic you don't understand. You do a good job in helping people understand pilot stuff. Big thumbs up. As I watch more and more, I realize you not only support Leos, but are actually part of an organization. You won some major kudos in my book because, as I'm sure you've realized by the patches I sent, we share the same profession. I realize you wear many hats and being deputy is just one small hat that you wear. Either way, enjoy some patches on me, and if you like them, there's more where those came from and some challenge coins. If you ever find yourself on overnight ICT, look me up, and you can come take some calls with me. Oh, that'd be awesome. That's fun. Uh, Officer Lee, uh, Patrol East First Shift. That is badass. Thanks, Lee. That's awesome. I need to figure out a, a board for all these patches. That, that's my next project, is to get a board, because everybody sends patches, and right now I've just got a stack of patches. This comes from Steve. Mover, T-38 shots from Beale Air Force Base. Thank you for the aviation-related channels and great insight. Whoa! These are awesome. Whoa, that's a good shot right there. That is awesome. You know who would like this? You guys remember uh, Dave, the U2 pilot? Uh, he would love it as well because he might be actually in one of these if these are recent. Stormy would love it too because Stormy flew these exact jets. That's most of his career was flying that. That is awesome. Thank you, uh, Steve. Hello, little girl. You want to say hi? Say hi. Say hi. That's Lulu. She's good. She's getting big. She's a good girl, though. Uh, if you're into dogs and like puppers, uh, Life with Mover, my other channel, and uh, also I've got the Lemoyne Dogs Instagram page that's just the dogs. I separated it from my normal Instagram. So, it's mostly just Luna and the boys. Why does it sound like there's a dog behind me? Oh, they're all in here. That is hilarious. They all come in here thinking that it's dog treat time. And it says, this comes from Cole. Hi, I want to start out by saying I'm an enormous fan of your channel. You've been my go-to source for learning the nuances of military aviation. And I always take away something new from each episode. Your presentation style is informative as it is entertaining. I get a real kick from watching your DCS gameplay. Tom Katz. His words, not mine. Although they were also mine. I've been following closely. I've been closely following your car vlogs, and they really resonate with me as a racing enthusiast, amateur racer myself. I began racing 50cc go-karts after high school, and it's about the closest I'll ever get at my age competing in Formula uh, or IndyCar, my two favorite series. It's become more of a hobby for me now since I work full-time as an A&P mechanic. Sadly, my local track closed down and I haven't been able to race since. Watching your onboard footage always gives me the bug. Firm believer that there is a direct parallel between fighter pilots and racing drivers. I have no doubt your skills will translate to success on the track if you yourself ever decide to compete. I hope this model of Nigel, Nigel Manziel's 1992 championship winning Williams FW14B will find a home in your collection. Wishing you the best in all your endeavors. Look forward to seeing more on the track action with the ZR1 in the future. Eat gas and haul ass. That is awesome. And this is a cool model. That is awesome. Y'all are nice. Just awesome. I, I do not deserve you guys. This is just amazing. Thank you so much. All right, well, let's uh, let's transition. Sniper, you got a whole box of Tritos we'll give you after this is over. He's sitting right here. Uh, let's, let's look at some emails. All right, this comes from Kevin. He says, flying. Hey, Mover, I'm in the process of watching all of your YouTube videos. Well, that's a lot. I don't know how many have I've done. Have I hit 200 yet? Really enjoying the content and the advice you're offering everyone and has encouraged me to pursue my dream of flying. When I was a kid, I also had the desire to be a fighter pilot. When I was a teen, I spoke to an Air Force recruiter and I was told I couldn't fly because I didn't have perfect vision. It really was a deflating thing to hear as a 17-year-old back in the 80s. I just gave up the opportunity and started looking for something else to do with my life. The desire never went away and I think about getting a private pilot license. I would think about it often and made every kid, every kind of excuse from money to time as excuses not to. After many years of working as an electronics technician, car mechanic, heavy equipment operator, locomotive mechanic, to a crane technician, then hurting my back on the job, I'm now trying to figure out what to do with the rest of my life at 50. 
Not being able to continue working in a maintenance field anymore because of the back injury and back surgery stirred up that desire to fly again. For the last year, I thought about flying. For the last year, I thought about trying to fly again, but continue to make excuses. I started watching your YouTube channel, and after hearing you encourage everyone to make them tell you no, I decided to go get my pilot license and do something I've always wanted to do. I'm not sure where it will take me, but I'm going to get it and see where it goes. When I'm flying every now and then, becoming a trainer or flying commercially. I'm going to find out. Thank you for your encouragement for your service, Kevin. Awesome. It's never too late, man. Never too late. Do what you want. Follow your dreams. Go get your pilot's license. You never know. Opportunity may come knocking. You know, Lester started flying later in his uh, career. I mean, he doesn't do it full time, but you can be a CFI. You can go fly. You can still fly for the airlines. I mean, you've got 15 years left if that's what you want to do. So uh, a lot of good opportunities. Uh, and then you can even fly just privately well beyond 65. So I hope you get uh, what you're looking for. I hope you accomplish your goals and I'm, thank you for the email. That's really inspiring. Uh, this comes from Derek. Airplanes are awesome watching from the ground. Hi Mover. First off, thank you for your service. I have great admiration and gratitude for those that put their lives on the line to keep us safe and free. I also have been a subscriber to your channel for the last year and not missed a video yet. Thank you for the awesome content. As someone who grew up in the 90s, Top Gun never left the VCR. I drove my mom and dad crazy by watching it over and over. Greatest movie of all time and also was the reason I fell in love with aviation and gray jets. Although I never did end up pursuing an aviation career, I've always been fascinated by airplanes and been in the off fighters in particular. Nothing more exhilarating than listening to the sound of freedom and full burner flying overhead. Now that I'm older, I've come to the realization that it was a good thing I never pursued aviation as a career because although I've always loved airplanes, when you actually put me into the steel tube at 30,000 feet above the ground, I am a nervous Nelly. I've done plenty of research to know that aviation is the safest form of travel, I have an understanding of the basic flight characteristics of commercial planes to know they're not just going to fall out of the sky, but even with that knowledge, every time we hit the slightest bit of turbulence, I pucker up tighter than, well, we'll just leave it at that. I'll finally get to my question. As a pilot of both fast jets and commercial aircraft, what advice would you have to the weary flyer to help them overcome their fear or just have a more relaxing flight experience? Are there any techniques or methods you'd recommend uh, to help with this? Someone who I don't know personally, but I've come to trust, I greatly appreciate your thoughts behind this question. I'm sure many other nervous flyers would feel the same. Thank you again for your time and for your service, Derek. Um, wow, so that's, that's a tough, that's a good question. Um, if you can, I would go take a discovery flight um, at your local airport and go actually fly in like a Cessna or something. Because once, I think once you have been in control of an aircraft, you kind of know what to expect and you know what every phase of flight is. And you know that turbulence is just, I mean, it's just rough air and the, the aircraft is fine. Um, I, I think that advantage of having been the manipulator of the controls is what makes it's easy for me to say, hey, it, you know, it's no big deal. A lot of people try alcohol. I don't recommend getting too drunk because they'll kick you off the plane. And now with all the mask stuff and social distancing and stuff, I can't imagine flying. I mean, I, I bet you it's a lot more stressful flying on an airliner than it used to be. But um, I, honestly, I, other than I think a lot of the fear comes from being not in control and not necessarily having a, a good grasp of what's going on. And I think maybe, you know, taking that discovery flight and maybe, or getting into simulators or something, you kind of know what's going on. So you're just like, yeah, okay, we're taking off. You know, the bumps aren't a big deal. Um, we'll be fine. Cause you got to understand the people that are flying it have thousands of hours. They, some are military trained, some are civilian trained. They're all professionals. Uh, it, it's very safe, but also, um, they, as I've said in the, uh, myths about the airline thing, they want to live too. So, you know, they're, as long as they're safe, you're probably going to be safe too. So I, I think that, um, it's, it's not something to worry about. It's a very common thing. And there's so much redundancy, you know, even like the United triple seven, I mean, that, that was a, a horrific, uh, engine failure and with a fire and they made it back safely. Not a big deal because they got two engines. You know, so um, I think that, as you said, air travel is inherently safe and, and part of your anxiety just comes from not being in control, but also not knowing what to anticipate. So maybe, maybe go and you might kick off a love of aviation that makes you a pilot. You never know. But thanks for the email, uh, Derek.
All right, this one comes from Andy. Hey, Mover, I've been watching your YouTube channel for a while now, and I just decided to put a question in your mailbag, so to speak. I believe you've been asked that probably 100 times a day or so, but anyways, and this is really just a theoretical question. Me, I'm 39 from Austria, physically not really in good shape, not saying I'm in bad shape, though. Pretty sure I'm getting a straight zero for an answer, but what are my chances to become a fighter pilot at the Navy or Air Force? Keep it the great works, reading Andy. Well, um, so you got a couple hurdles. One, your age, and, you know, I won't tell you that it's impossible, but it's unlikely. You know, I mean, in order at your age to get hired, because it would be you're, you're exclusively talking just about guard right now, because I don't think the reserves are going to put in that waiver at that age, and I don't think the active duty will do it either. Um, I think the likelihood is low. You would have to be a perfect candidate, and saying that you're not in great shape would probably disqualify you right out the gate because at your age, you don't have any ability to not be, you know, you'd have to have the highest scores. You'd have to be a great, you know, they have to love you when you interviewed and you'd have to have everything going in your favor that that just the age was the thing going against you. Um, and the other part being you're from Austria. So I don't know, you didn't mention it, but you have to be a U.S. citizen. So um, if you're not a U.S. citizen, you're, you're, your chances are actually zero because by the time you get citizenship, you're like in your 40s. So uh, I don't know the answer to that. But it's, if you're just 39, a U.S. citizen, and you had perfect scores, I'd say your chances are low, but you have chances. Uh, anything beyond that, yeah, it's, it's probably not going to happen. So sorry about that. Uh, but hey, thanks for the email, Andy. All right, last question comes from Wilson. Applying to multiple Guard Reserve units and or branches. Dear Mover, I'm a fresh college grad, and since I don't want to live in my parents' basement for the rest of my life, I'm applying to two National Guard units and active duty for the Navy and Coast Guard. And keep my eye out for another particular Air Force Reserve unit for openings as well. Just kidding. I'm doing what I'm doing because my dream is to fly for the U.S. military. I do. That was a good. That was funny though. I, I enjoyed that. I'm also applying to multiple units branches because I understand statistically I have a very small chance of being accepted in each of these programs. So I want to increase my chances by applying to multiple units and branches. I would like to ask you some ethics related questions associated with applying to multiple units and branches. Number one, we've done fighter pilot ethics before, but this is another ethical question. Uh, I will. Uh, number one, will this negatively impact my applications? I know I will have to inform some folks of each unit officer recruiter since they will need my MEPS info. I wonder if this will make it up to the selection boards and negatively impact my chances. Okay, well, we'll do one, one for one. So will applying to multiple things negatively impact your applications? No. Units expect you to apply multiple places. That shows your tenacity. That shows your desire, your hunger. I, I, if anything, it's a good thing because if I'm on the board, it shows me that you want this and this is something you're not just... Uh, expecting to have it handed to you, you're out there going and making sure that, that that you get your slot and that you serve our country and that it's not just about, you know, shiny jet syndrome, that you've only applied to this one unit that flies this one jet, et cetera, that you, above all else, want to be a pilot in the United States military. And I think that's awesome. Now, I don't, I don't think it will at all. In the best case scenario where I do get picked up by multiple entities, how should I handle a situation where I have to turn down offers? As you mentioned, that reputation is very important. I wonder, to turning, I wonder turning down offers will negatively impact my reputation. Um, no. I mean, if they offer you, um, you know, I would say the only time it negatively impacts your reputation is if you accept the offers. So if it's just an offer until you accept it, right? So in my opinion, let's say if you applied to, you know, Homestead and Carswell and you wanted to fly the F-16, but you wanted to live in uh, Fort Worth but, and you, you know, you love the Miami area, but you'd rather live in Fort Worth and they both offer you a job and you accept Fort Worth. Well, they're sister squadrons, right? So you're going to deploy together. I don't think there's going to be any hard feelings for turning them down because you didn't accept. Now, if you were to get the Homestead offer first, accept it, they start the paperwork, and then Carswell says, hey, we're gonna offer you a job and you accept that too, and then go turn down Homestead? Yeah, that's a problem. So up until the point that you say yes, it's an offer. You know, you're a free agent, it's an offer. 
you've applied to a bunch of places and you know obviously you were a competitive candidate and it's gonna eventually come to fruition but i i don't think it's a problem just an offer that's why they, they you know they have multiple people that they select you know they don't just say hey we have one slot and we're going to select one person that's why they have primaries alternates and all that stuff so you have to look out for yourself to get to where you want to be um, I do appreciate that you are thinking about this and you, you know, that you're not violating rule number one, so that's good. And you are trying to be a, a good person, but you have to, um, do what, what's necessary to, to get the, to get the slot and to get there. Because if you only applied to one unit and you had to wait around 10 years, you know, you could age out. So I don't think anybody expects you to only apply to one unit. What they do expect you to do is just honor your word. So, you know, number one, be honest with them. If they go, hey, have you applied anywhere else? Yes. And number two, if they say, hey, uh, if we offer you a job, you know, and you accept it, do we have your word? And the answer is yes. So just make sure that you don't accept anything you're not willing to take. Uh, but before that you know it's it's fair because they're they may not select you it's the same it's a two-way street right they have to offer and you have to accept if you don't have both of those you really don't have anything uh thank you for what you do to the community and i credit you and your videos for a lot of the guidance especially in regards to flying for the air national guard uh, vr wilson awesome thanks wilson i'm uh glad we could help and i'm glad you're uh watching and you know make them tell you no that's all i can say um so anyway uh thank you all especially uh, these packages are awesome. Thanks so much, so to speak. And uh, thanks for the emails. We'll do more. Sorry, it's been kind of sparse. I've been really busy trying to get the project going for next week. Um, so hopefully we'll have more time uh, in the coming weeks. But uh, we'll try to get some more you know, DCS content and um, the, the helicopter flying will be back and maybe some more Remover Ruins movies. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Have a great week and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.